Why did I have you read David in reverse? Because you had to go get the why. Because if you started the first, he was just in a pit. It was horrible. Everything going bad. But if you go three verses later, he's got a new song, and he's got courage to take care of what it is. So go in, you got to go in reverse. So here's what I want you to do is go in reverse, get you a pad of paper or get you some, some open up pages on your notepad or get it in your phone and begin to write your praise. So say it out loud, I'm going to write my praise. Come on, confess it out in your spirit. I'm going to begin to write my praise. Well, what am I going to praise God about? Well, you're in trouble right now, but just begin to write your praise. You'll start with things you know, and then the, 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 the mind of the spirit will begin to draw you into places that you should be praising God for. Remember, praising is where you overcome the discouragement. And the sweetest praise is right before the answer. And sometimes I praise God. I've been praising God for years on certain things, and I don't know when it's going to come. And just when I think I've about gotten up, there comes a sweet. I don't know how to describe it to you. There becomes a sweetness in my give up. There comes this time, I say, well, Lord, you're just going to, I know you're going to do it. It just comes that time, and then all of a sudden, just text come or phone call comes or things happen and, and, and seeds I sowed way back yonder. You know, I was just sitting right here on the front row and, and there was a meeting the night before and God had a man I haven't spoken to in 10 years, a man contending for me in New Jersey and France and, and London on a phone call and they were saying, where is that preacher? Where is he now? And he was saying, I know right where he is. I get it done. They said, I'm pressuring you. Find him. We have to get this product to him. He's the only one that knows what to do with it. You know, God, this, you got to learn these two prayers because as you're writing praise, you need to write this prayer. Write it. I pray that my name, you heard Doug say it in his sermon yesterday. I pray that my name comes upon the lips of those that are going to bless God through me. Write it. Then say it every day. I've taught this to several of you, but I rarely see it used. Then the next prayer you're going to pray is I pray for men. They would do for me normally what they would not do. You'll know it's working when somebody says, I just heard your name and I had to call you. Find that preacher. Find that guy. Find that guy that can move truckloads of this stuff and that stuff. Find him. You'll know it when somebody says, well, we don't normally do this, but we're going to do this. You'll know there's five other prayers, but we don't have time for it, so you'll have to wait for the take 10 deals because I'm, I'm now getting a little bolder in my old age and I'm going to share stuff. But the thing is that you always get negativity from people that just don't know God. So every day when you get up, write your praise. You say, well, I'm not hearing from God yet. Hush, patience. One day you're going to start writing your praise, and something else is going to come back, and I'm going to prove it to you. Look at David's writings in the Psalms. He starts out as him, and it winds up as Jehovah God speaking to him, talking through him. You can see the words exactly change and where they change. I can tell you that many men do this, and they don't even know they're doing it. Bishop Heron and I know he writes most of his sermons longhand and writes them out, and he probably still do. They're probably they're thick of sermons. Uh, I know many people that Jack does that. They don't even realize. They think they got to preach it all on one Sunday morning, and it drives all of us crazy. But anyway, the issue is true that God has a way to speak to us. But we keep getting distracted by going and finding a, a book to verify what we're hearing. Just go with your heart. There'll be time for verification later. I've got stacks of, of nurse words from the Lord that I will ne I'll probably never be able to preach. I don't know. They were just voices and musing of the Lord that he's spoken to the earth, and they're in the atmosphere through my pen. And, and who knows when they'll go out? I don't. They may never go out, but he has spoken it, and his word will not return void. So what are you going to do? You're going to find a, a place. I prefer to tell you to start with quietness. Just kill the music too. Oh, I got to have my prayer music. Okay, sorry, darling. Just get quiet and write your praise. This will order your mind. 
Then began to ask the Lord, to, your name to come up on the lips of the, those that are going to bless him through you. And that men would do for you what they normally would not do. Because you've got to have a harvest of your prayer. Okay? And then just go back to writing your praise. And just keep writing. And all of a sudden, something will happen. And you'll be writing along, wink, 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 wink. And you'll want to go tell everybody, don't. Don't go preach it. I preach it in the church at Dwindle. It's, it's high protein. It's stuff that's given to you for you. Cook it down. Learn how to work with it. Learn how to share with it. Learn how to bring it. Because even today, in this word, all the things I'm working with, I have spoken too long. I know that. But in the issue that's at hand, I'm trying to get those things in your ears pulled out so that your natural hair follicle can grow back and the word of the Lord will not be rare in our life. Let me pray for you. Would you bow your head? Father, I pray. Thank you, Father. I pray for those listening and watching today and those that even 5, 10 years, 15 years from now who hear this that are seeking you. Let them get close enough to hear, to go into the tent of meeting, whether it's a busy airport, whether it's the courtroom, whether it's the jail cell, whether it is a, a sea or a pit that is horrible, let them turn their things away and turn only to you and order their minds. Now, Father, many of your servants have done this already. Now I ask you that the word of the Lord would not be rare. Now I would, I would ask those of you that I'm praying for to begin to declare right now that the word of the Lord will not be rare in your geographical location. Begin to proclaim it right now. The word of the Lord will not be rare. This church here is so blessed because Bishop Dave brings the word of the Lord to them that he hears from the Lord. It, he, they don't understand that all these, all these dramas and things come from his time with the Lord, and God speaks to him, and then he finds out how to minister it to his locale and where he is. I could go on and on about different ones in the room, but may I just say right now, proclaim the word of the Lord will not be quiet in my writing. I will write before the Lord. I will hear before the Lord. I will know until I have words. Then, here's the last part, and we're done. Proclaim this. I will exchange questions for answers. David said, I wait patiently. But while he was waiting, he got this new song. <laughs> so let's just stand and... and <laughs> Oh, glory to God. I started singing in the spirit to David Powell. He's over playing on the, on, the, on the piano the other night, and I just went over and started singing to him in the spirit. I said, I, I said oh, thank the Lord. I, be, I don't remember what the song was, but it said something like this. It said, I was in a Dollar General working, and uh, I thought I was in despair. I had lost my family, and I knew nothing. And we went over last night. We were so late last night. went over how a miracle Put him in Terre Haute and put him in, him in, him in, uh, uh, I wouldn't even pay attention to Murray. And I wouldn't even pay attention to him. And he came to see me and stayed for two days and finally got to show me what he wanted to talk to me about. I wouldn't pay attention. It was bad. But it was God's timing because the minute that he shared it, the phone rang and it was David. And I said, David, uh, uh, oh, my God. It was my wife saying, you got to get here. You've made an appointment with David and David's here. And I hadn't seen him for 30 years. I said, we got to go back and see him. And then a year later, exactly, Murray was with me and sitting on the golf cart asking me, or not playing golf, I have a chase unhappy, my dog. And, uh, and, 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 and he said, he started pouring this out to me, and the phone rang, and it was David. And I, we went back to that, I don't know the whole story, but anyway, it was a great victory. David's in Terre Haute, he's out of Dollar General. Uh, but, but I went over and sang him this word from the Lord. Now, it may be goofy to you, and it was goofy to me, but it sure wasn't goofy to David Powell. He got it. <laughs> but he's kind of goofy anyway, so uh, how many appreciated the miracle of David Powell pr playing for us a couple of days? Thank God. He's, he's back on a mountain. The pit was horrible. I want you to turn to somebody and just look them right in the eye and release them to hear the word of the Lord. Come on. Bishop Dave. <laughs> Write your praise. It will revolutionize your life. It will put you ahead of the curve. 
in everything that you do. God has the ability to tell you what's coming down the path if we'll take a moment and listen to him. Let me just say to all of you that are here, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for your giving. To all of those that served uh, here at New Life the last couple of weeks in planning and preparation and the carry out of all of this, the hours that you have engaged, we declare the blessing of God upon your life and we thank you for it. You have been incredible. Um, Pastor Jack, if you don't mind, we would love to pray for you today and declare, bring Lynn with you. Uh, all of our bishops come, our ministers, please come. Um, Neil, can you grab that? Or it's on um, right behind my desk. There's a chug of oil. Seven, eight, nine, nine. I've just released that. Three muskets.